Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, the 27th of May. I was struck in the reading from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. It's the prayer of Hannah. Hannah, of course, is this woman who is barren, and she prays that God will deliver her and give her children. And God hears her prayer, and he gives her children. And she had promised to God, if you give me a child, I will dedicate him and I will offer him um, to, to you, Lord Jesus. My firstborn will be offered to you. And that, of course, is the prophet Samuel. And Hannah, when she falls pregnant and gives birth, she weans the child. So he's uh, presumably a, a good couple of years old. And then she takes him back to the temple and she gives him to the priest, Ezra, and says, this is the promise. This is what I had prayed for, and God heard my prayer and answered me, and I therefore dedicate my son to you. What an incredible thing to do. I wonder how many moms would be willing to do that as a sign of gratitude to God. But of course, this is what Hannah felt she needed to do, and God honored her. And Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, is well worth reading and meditating, contemplating on, because it is the most amazing prayer. It has such a strong parallel in the Magnificat that Mary prays when she is with her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth proclaims that um, the child in my womb jumped for joy when you walked in with the child in your womb. And of course, Elizabeth is a mother of John the Baptist. And Mary prays out the Magnificat, and that you can find in Luke chapter 1. And there's such a strong parallel to Hannah's prayer. And it struck me that we talk quite glibly at times about praying to God for deliverance. And we acknowledge that God more often than not answers our prayer. May offer it answer it a little later than we anticipate. He may answer it very differently to what we thought um, the answer should be, but answer he does. And when he does and you realize that God has just delivered you, then you are filled with praise and glory, as is echoed here in Hannah's prayer. So I really do encourage you to read it and to think about it yourself and to think about the times God has answered prayer for you. Sometimes it might have been not a verbal prayer that you have prayed, but just a, a little thought, a little desire. Um, and God brings you across just the perfect wife or husband and gives you the most incredible kids. Um, and he just answers your prayers or whispers, as has happened to me in the past, because all the others are true as well. But has whispered to me, slow the car down quickly. And I do so and somebody shoots out of the intersection having not stopped at, the, at, at, a, at a stop street. And I realized that if I hadn't heard that little voice and obeyed it, I would have been involved in an accident. That, that's happened a few times. And God wants to work with us. And this is where we pick up Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. So it's 1 Samuel 2, 1 to 10, and Ephesians 2, 1 to 10. Um, and, and Paul is writing here and saying, but you know, this is what God wants for us. We were one thing in the past, lost in our sinfulness and our lack of knowledge of who God is. But now that we have found him, God wants to honor us and bless us and guide us. And so, folks, I want to encourage you. Think about the times God has answered prayer and delivered you and thank him for that. Praise him for that. And you will really be filled with praise when you think just how deeply God has loved you and cared for you and met you and continue that relationship with him. Folks, have a good weekend, and we'll chat again next week. Bye-bye.